Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be taking a look at how to do a two-part splice on a 556 ACSR. I recorded this footage quite a while ago. I've been driving around with this guy in the back of my truck for months. Alright, so just before we get started here guys, 556 ACSR or ACSR in general. The ACSR stands for Aluminum Conductor Steel Reinforced. If we look in this bundle, that little bit darker gray center, that's steel surrounded by all aluminum. There are all aluminum conductors, there's copper conductors, there's, well, steel's used for guy wire. But the purpose of the ACSR is the majority of the current travels around the aluminum while the steel core is designed for tensile strength of the lines. It allows to run a high opacity conductor like aluminum for long spans while still having the strength to hold itself up in the air. The tensile strength of 556 ACSR is approximately 22,000 pounds. And this two part sleeve is good for 95% of that total tensile strength of the line. The reason it's a two part sleeve is there's an actual steel sleeve inside this that presses onto the steel and then it has the aluminum sleeve that slides over top in order to carry the majority of the current. One other thing we're going to look at during the video is the press that we use for this guy. It's not your typical 6T crimper because simply the jaws won't fit around that. But we did see this kit on my Instagram of dies to fit Milwaukee 12T. And I suppose some of you were probably wondering what the purpose of a die like this was. For a smaller size that'll obviously fit in a six time crimper. So why would you waste your money on a huge expensive die like this to fit into the 12 ton press? So that's actually very important when you're doing sleeves on these larger conductors. So we'll take a look at that in the video as well. But enough chat, let's jump right into it. So first thing we're gonna wanna do obviously is prep the wire. You want a good flush cut without any strands longer than others or hanging out. The straighter, the more flush the cut, the better. Obviously it's easier if you use a battery cutting tool, you wanna make sure that you have your steel dies where there's a steel core in this so you don't damage the dies. We did put some tape around the conductor just so it doesn't birdcage so the steel strands don't fly apart. And also, this is a brand new conductor, so we didn't brush it at all. At the demand. In the field, Did you take that plastic if, one off? it's an older aluminum conductor that's been up in the air for years. So you're definitely going to want to brush that aluminum conductor. Next step is you're going to want to mark your wire. When you have the sleeve over top of the wire, it's hard to tell whether you pushed it in too far or not. So we're going to line the center point up and mark where the sleeve's going to come out to when we put that on. Where it is a two-part sleeve, you absolutely have to put this aluminum outer sleeve on first. If you start crimping that steel core and forgot to put this guy on, you're going to have to start from scratch. So we're going to repeat the same process with the steel sleeve. There isn't really a center point marked on this guy, so we're going to measure it just under 8 inches, mark our center point, and then we're going to mark the wire for how much we have to strip off. So we can see I've got two marks on the wire here. Reason being, there's going to be some cold flow when we start crimping. That first mark is where the sleeve is going to start at, and it's pretty much going to reach that second mark once we start crimping. When you start crimping your 556 outer sleeve, you don't want to be crimping over top of the steel portion. We're going to be using what we call a work saver to remove the aluminum strands. This part's extremely important to be careful not to score the steel conductor, the steel core underneath the wire. So it's pretty much like a pipe cutter. You've got a little guide wheel that sets into that groove right there. And then you just tighten the wheel at the back of the handle clockwise and you'll see that cutting wheel getting closer to those aluminum strands. This is going to Take multiple cuts. You're not going to make it through the whole first row just with one spin. Again, much like a pipe cutter. So you're just going to go around and around, slowly tightening the wheel at the back. 
as you cut. This first layer of strands, not a big deal. You can be pretty careless with this, tightening it up quite a bit. You'll see that they start to birdcage a little bit as they're being cut through. And once you feel those aluminum strands start to release, you can remove them. Now this second set of strands, I usually throw tape here, again, just so I don't have pieces of strands flying all over the place. But you want to be a little bit more careful here, because if you start going too deep, you're going to score those steel strands on, on the inner part of the wire. That's going to drastically reduce the tensile strength of this conductor. I find the best method, I, I'm a little aggressive tightening the first one or two spins, but then I go real easy, just tightening up small amounts. And if you grab the aluminum strands with your other hand, just give them a quick wiggle back and forth. You can almost break them off before they're completely cut through. I can feel a little bit of resistance there, so I think I won't read into the steel. So you can see here, I'm just giving them a wiggle back and forth, and suddenly they release. Now I'm down to my steel core, and the cutting wheel did not make a mark whatsoever in those steel strands. That's, that's an ideal cut right there. So we're going to have to remove our work saver. As soon as we do, those strands are going to start coming apart and start bird caging. So what I recommend, you release it slowly and put a piece of tape. You can see I did leave a little gap. I left uh, about a quarter of an inch of aluminum before I started with the tape. I'll show you why that is here shortly. But then we're going to repeat the same process on the other side of the wire. Here's a better view here of removing the last row of aluminum strands where I twist and kind of break them off. And again, there was no score marks on the steel whatsoever. You can see the steel strands did start coming unwound a little bit and that's not a big deal. You can just kind of wind them back together there. Now this time, I'm gonna leave that work saver tool right in place. I'm not going to bother with tape, and again, we'll see that in a minute. But our next step is going to be to install our steel core. You want to take a bit of a measurement there. I just kind of marked the wire with the penetrox that was inside so I could see its proper depth, make sure that it is fully inserted. In order to complete this next step to crimp the steel sleeve inside the 556 sleeve, You've got to have a 12 ton crimper. When we got the kit from the office, the dies of this nature were missing. So we kind of simulated crimping it when we were filming the video. We did try crimping it with the six ton and it didn't even make a mark in that steel. So a short while after filming this video, Milwaukee did send me a free 12 ton linear crimper along with this die kit. And as much as I would have loved to redo the whole video, these sleeves aren't cheap. I don't sleeve them. I don't do this often in the field. And I waited a few months since getting it. The opportunity hasn't come up and I didn't want to unnecessarily waste another sleeve. It's important to mention also, and this goes for any die kit, for any brand, that these guys here, labeled CU, are designed for copper only. So we can see here on each die, it's labeled 2 watt CU. Generally speaking, the dies that are designed for aluminum have this more hexagonal shape, and the copper crimps have this round shape. The dies are super easy to install. You don't have to have the top open, which not a big deal if you did. Super easy to open. Uh, it's a good habit to make sure the battery's not in when you're doing this. This has 12 tons of compression. You don't want to get your fingers jammed in there. So you just line them up. You can see that little groove, that little groove right there. That lines up with this groove right here. And you simply drop it in place and you'll see 
it naturally stops right about there. You push this button down, that just releases the little ball on the inside, and it locks in place. You do want to make sure they are fully seated, or you could damage the press, or the die, or the sleeve. Pull that guy down, lift that over, and drop it over the wire. It does have a pivoting head to help with ergonomics while you're working on the bucket or off your hooks. This newer style is actually the fastest 12 ton crimper in the market. Pretty impressive. So we've just seen the new linear 12 ton crimper. It's quite dramatically faster than the older version and any other manufacturers. You can actually see where I tried to crimp it with the six ton right there, this tiny little mark in the steel, but it wouldn't cut it. So that's why we need that bigger set of dies that fits into the 12 ton. And this portion here, which didn't creep because we didn't crimp the sleeve, that would have expanded almost all the way to the aluminum. The last thing you want is for that steel to actually hit up against and crush the aluminum. So here where I mentioned that we leave the work saver in place, it's simply to keep the strands together until we get that aluminum sleeve right up to that point. You want to make sure that steel sleeve in the center is pretty well perfectly straight. Just leave that tape on long enough to get that over top of the aluminum strands. We'll pull that tape off. And we just saw there why we left a little bit of a gap so we can use the, the aluminum sleeve itself to hold the strands in place before removing the tape. Mark. This should be at our mark on this other end. Perfect. You're going to want to fill the, the interior of the sleeve where there is an air gap with some Penetrox. You don't want any water sitting inside that sleeve against that steel, against those steel strands. I mean, all you're trying to do is fill the void where the uh, steel is. You don't want to lose this guy in the kit. It's just a little plug. You can see we got that thing completely full of Penetrox. So you just drop that plug in place, give it a couple good whacks from, with your hammer. I'm holding it in my hand because in the field, this wire is going to be suspended in the air. So you're not going to have a table to bang it against, but it still easily sets down in place without a whole lot of effort. And for the outer part, we've actually got our dies. They're CSA 30 dies. You can see that hex hexagonal shape. Unfortunately, I didn't have the new linear press at the time. So again, this one's a little bit slow and painful to watch. So we're going to speed this up uh, eight times speed here. We do overlap the crimps on these sleeves. Right here I make some marks just so you can see that the cold flow expansion. With every crimp you can see there's a gap after that third line and it's slowly closing in on that mark I made. And then the next crimp it's going to start to expand past that mark I made. By the time you do the entire sleeve, there's almost a solid inch of, of cold flow expansion. So that's why we left that gap on the steel in the interior. I want to have some paper towels or something to clean that gunk off. And you don't have to worry a whole lot. Once you get to the end, the end's tapered. So if you go too far with your crimping, it doesn't even mark the sleeve. So you don't have to worry about going too far and this is our finished product right here all right guys so that's all we've got for you all today something real interesting doing these guys hot rubber gloving three face bit of run jumpers across it's a whole different procedure but we're gonna sign off I'll edit this up later I've got it to get back to work kind of building a wall for my gym but lots of cool stuff coming up. We've got a Bob's Decline Goes Solar video coming up very soon. 6,000 watts. Nice. Thanks for stopping in as always, and we'll see you all soon.